Friends, welcome back to the Ransomed Heart, Wild at Heart podcast. And if you didn't hear last week's episode, then you missed the big announcement. Right. The big announcement that we are, as a ministry, changing our name from Ransomed Heart to Wild at Heart. And there's a whole big story why, and we told that in last week's episode, but basically it's this. We've done some research and discovered that 90% of our readers have no idea that Ransomed Heart exists. Like there's a whole audience out there. The, the massive, massive portion of our audience that doesn't know we have a podcast, doesn't know we have daily readings, doesn't know we do events that change people's lives. Right, and we want to reach them with Jesus's Isaiah 61 ministry. Exactly. And then the other thing is that it's so hard to say and so hard to spell and people go random hearts, you know, so. Yeah, we get packages to rancid hearts, random parts, (laughs) the random heat, (laughs) and people think we're a medical ministry because it's ransom med. Right, which it's not. It's wild at heart. Yeah. So to hear the whole story, go back and grab last week's podcast, but nothing's changing. We're not exclusively focusing on the message of the book, Wild at Heart. We're not changing our staff. We're not changing our priorities. We're using a widely recognized name. So many stories to tell you around that of you try and introduce people, even myself, as I'm you know, saying, yeah, we've got this organization called Ransomed Heart. What's that? Well, it's kind of based around a book that I wrote called Wild at Heart. Oh, yeah, I heard of that. So we have this massive name recognition that we're simply going to seize and are making the transition as an organization to wildatheart.org, um, not .com, unfortunately, because that's owned by a company in the UK that does flowers. But everything else remains the right. same. Right. It remains a ministry for the masculine heart and the feminine heart. Yep, so not becoming exclusively boot camps or any of that. So welcome to this week's episode. We are introducing a new series this week on how to protect our hearts. How is it that you guard your heart? Proverbs 4.23 has for decades and decades, even before the writing of Sacred Romance, was a passage very dear to us and Stacy and I are in the studio here this week to open up a conversation about learning to watch over our hearts that I think is going to be really, really helpful to you all here in this particular hour on the earth. But before we jump into Proverbs 4.23 and the role of the heart, let's just back up, set the stage, and remember some things about humanity and our situation because God designed us to govern. God created us to have a governing role, a reigning and ruling role, right from the very beginning. Right. So here, I want to read from Genesis. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. <laughs> I love that scurry I along know, me the too. ground. The scurry part. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about a pack rat that <laughs> built a nest in our cabin and absolutely destroyed it this winter. Rule Do I, over that. Yeah, I got to rule over that little invader. But clearly, clearly from the beginning, the design is that we are kings and queens of the earth, small K, small Q. We are lords of the earth, small L. It's so deep in our design to rule and to reign, to have governance over things. Psalm 115, the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind, to the human race, to govern, to care for. So you see that shepherding role. Yeah, the responsibility even. It's just so deep in our DNA. Yeah. And all the way then to the end of the story, you see us when we step into our full role in the redeemed earth and heavens and we are in our glory, we're still doing it. Right. Yeah. Revelations 5. 
You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seal and open it, for you were slaughtered and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God, and they will reign on the earth. Reigning. Yeah, wow. There it is right? again. Yeah. Right? Our destiny. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the original design and the restored design. It's all the same. It's, it's one fabric of something given to us. So all of our capacities, your intellect, your emotions, your will, your gifting, your moment in history, yes. the city that you live in, or if you live in the country, everything about you was created by God and situated by God to live this calling out, to live out a ruling and reigning and governing calling. And this was Dallas Willard's thing. Like if you are a Willard fan, as a number of our staff is, this was one of his basic teachings that everyone has a kingdom to govern. Everyone has something over which they have say. Yeah, you have dominion over something. Like when we first start reading these verses and talking about it, you're going to govern the earth. You know, you're going to govern nations. Like it can seem like, well, not me. But actually, no, every single person does have a domain that they have been entrusted with Yeah. to govern. Yeah. Dallas would say your domain is the range of your effective and influential choices. Ooh, that's good. So wherever you get to say, it goes. Yes. Right? What you say happens, that's your kingdom. And so your apartment mm. or your bedroom, if you share a house or your home, if you rent or you're a homeowner, that's your kingdom. You get to say what comes in and what doesn't come in. No, we're not going to paint your bedroom hot pink. No, we're not going to put green shag carpet in, right? Like, Right. It's not the 60s anymore. And I think even about your body, you're given your body to govern to a large degree. There's some things that are out of our control, but to a great degree, we're given that. It's part yeah. of our kingdom to govern. Yeah. What goes in your body, Right. how you use your how body, how you care for it, how you nourish it, mm -hmm. care for it. Yeah, exactly. And that's why the violation of the body, for example, is such a fundamental violation because people are not meant to trespass our kingdom. Yes. Right? Yeah. And that's why it just feels, we just feel the affront of mm -hmm. it, right? And if you have a car, your car is your kingdom, mm -hmm. your finances are your kingdom, because to a large degree, you get to choose what you're going to do with them. Yes. Right? Are you saving? Are you going to buy? Right? Yeah. Uh, and your time is actually part of your kingdom. I mean, you choose what you do with your time. Okay. Even as you say that, like, it feels like it's not, but you're right, it is. Yeah, that's the big lie, isn't it? Uh -huh. that, no, the world has seized my time, you know, between work and the kids or my obligations at church or da 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 da, da. You know, I know right. you made those choices. Initially, you joined that club, you took that job. You, and you can say no yes, to things. Yes, and you can still say no. So just painting a picture to get us started here of what a wonderful thing it actually is to be a governor, to be a governess. Yeah, to be entrusted with these things. I've always liked the phrase governess. Yeah, that sounds very regal, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very lovely. Like we are reigning over a kingdom. And and I think as we grow and as we mature in God and in our life in Him, He increases our kingdom. He tends mm -hmm. to, you know, you come into more influence and there's more in your world where what you say goes, right? And you have an effective reach in that. And this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. This is not a burden. This is this is meant to be a, a joy. Exactly. It's part of our calling. It's how we are, are formed and fashioned. So I think the frustration comes is when we think we don't. Know. Oh, yeah, exactly. Right. When you are a prisoner of war and you have lost virtually all of your effective will, mm -hmm. your governance. It's crushing to the human spirit. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, I've been enjoying, Stacy lately, you and the garden. We haven't had time in the past to really tend to our, our yard. Right. But as with a lot of people during the pandemic, we, we were at home and you're suddenly noticing 
Cad Zooks, you know. That, <laughs> Like, oh, what happened there? <laughs> we have not paid attention <laughs> yeah, to our kingdom. Yeah, ruling over my domain. Yeah, and it's been very joyful. Oh, it has. It's like reclaiming something. Yeah, Putting like, in new plants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, even weeding. Of course, just getting your hands in the dirt is just good for you. Yeah. But prior to this, with my hip injury, I couldn't do it. And then getting my flexibility back and then having some time and space. This is something that I've loved and it had slipped out yeah. of my life. So to regain it, and yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is my deal. So taking back it into my domain has mm. been really good. Take it back. Do, 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 do. Take it back. <laughs> Any Rocky fans out there? Okay, we're dating ourselves, but We are, we are. <laughs> but what we're painting is made to govern, made to rule, made, made to reign over realms. Yeah. And that that's a joyful thing. That's a wonderful thing. Like when you get to bring your influence to something, it's as simple sometimes as making a meal. You get to choose what you're going to serve and how it goes down and to do it joyfully and to enjoy it, have it go well. It's yeah, a really great thing. It's a lot of pleasure. Yeah. So ruling and reigning, having kingdoms to govern, now we can go to, there's something richer now and weightier to the command in Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life within you. Like, especially the kingdom of the heart. You're talking about ruling over your heart. Ruling and reigning mm. over the kingdom. I love Shakespeare's line, every man's heart a kingdom is. Like, your heart is a kingdom. Your heart is a realm of vast proportions, actually. Yes. I think once we can see it from heaven's side, we'll be amazed at how rich and beautiful and vast the heart is, filled with longing and desire and dreams, filled with memory, and yes, filled with heartache and loss. Yep, that's in there. That's part of your kingdom, too, mm -hmm. and part of what needs our care. But it's only been recently that I've seen these passages, in particular this one, Proverbs 4.23, as part of our governance as part of, oh, this is part of what it means to be Eve and to be Adam. I was given a heart. And yes, Christ is my shepherd, but actually I'm called to be the first shepherd of my heart. Like we have a role to play in how our heart is. Right? Yeah. Wow. So a couple other translations. Read the uh, New American Standard for Proverbs 4.23. It says, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. I like that they clarify with all diligence, or in the New Revised Standard, it says with all vigilance. Right, with intention, right? with intentionality. Like you are protecting the most precious thing you've ever been given. Like you would protect your child. Like you would protect something that is absolutely precious and dear to you. This is so important. Right? Yes. That here we are, Eve and Adam, governing, reigning creatures, given kingdoms to realm, but this kingdom, the kingdom of your heart? And what's fascinating is God seems to think that our effective will works here. So, for example, John 14, Jesus is preparing his dearest and closest friends for the worst moment in human history. They're about to see him betrayed, arrested, tortured, and executed. And remember, they know nothing about Easter. They know nothing about the next 2,000 years of the church. So what they're going to see in the current moment is awful. It's just unspeakable. It's the worst possible turn in the story, and they don't expect it. And here's what he says to them in John 14. He's trying to prepare them, and he says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Mm. What do you hear when you hear that? Well, I just had this image of a wild horse, <laughs> and do not let your hearts be troubled. Like my heart 
just as a tendency to run amok and it might just run that direction. Whereas he's saying, don't let it, no, rein it in. Mm. It may feel like a wild horse, but mm. I am a skilled horseman so that I can control it. I read, I hear, don't let your horse be troubled. And I'm like, what? No, like troubled is what just happens to the heart. My heart just gets troubled. And then from there, I've got to yeah. find my way out of the mess. Wow. So this even precedes <clears throat> that. Yeah. And that's interesting about that idea of preceding it because uh, Thomas Akempis in his wonderful book, The Imitation of Christ, says that the enemy is far more easily resisted when he is at the door of your heart rather than when after you let him in, right? So right. There, Jesus is not saying once trouble sweeps over you yeah. and once you are totally taken out by this, then here's how I want you to climb your way out. Right, right. He's saying be vigilant about your heart and where you're going to go prior to it running off. Right? Yeah. Like he's literally saying, don't let it go there. Mm. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. I know the things that you're about to see are absolutely terrible. Don't go there. Don't let that in. Don't let fear in. Right? Do not be anxious. Do not be afraid. And so I started, I started just going through some scriptures going, wait a second, like God is assuming that we have enough influence, enough power, enough reigning, what would you call that? Capacity. Thank you. Enough reigning capacity over our hearts to actually not get into a whole bunch of situations that I think I just kind of assume swept over us. So for example, Proverbs 23, it says, do not let your heart envy. Again, it's the idea of don't, Whew, don't so let. Good. Like, don't let. Don't even open the door. Don't even start that process. You have a governance there. You have the ability not to do that versus, you know, get six months down the road of full-blown envy and then yeah. repent your yes, way out of it. Right, right, right. And what I love about this, John, is that since he's saying it, it means it's possible. Yeah. This is really hopeful. Yes. I know that I've written on this for years and years and years, but for some reason I needed to hear this again. Mm -hmm. It's so core. Yeah. Because of the pandemic, because of all that has swept through our world, a lot got in. And I kind of found myself trying to, you know, as the homeowner of my soul, <laughs> I'm trying to run these pack rats out now, yes. you know, and all this stuff that has moved in mm -hmm. and taken over. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, wait a second. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to start that process. One chapter later in Proverbs 24, do not gloat when your enemy falls, when they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice. Now, can I just make a political inference for a moment? In the next six months here in the United States, this is going to be something that people of character are going to want to practice. Yes. Just be real careful what you do when people that you don't like or disagree with fall. God's saying, look, don't rejoice or the Lord will see and disapprove. And it goes on to say, and take away his wrath from them or his mm. justice or whatever mm. it is he's working out in their lives. So like the idea, do not let your heart entertain that. Yes. Right. You deserve that. That's yeah, keeping your heart. Right. Pure even. Holy cow. As Stacey and I were preparing for this and reflecting back on, wow, watching over like with vigilance, something that we care for very much, this kingdom of our hearts. And Jesus saying things like, don't let your heart go there. Uh -huh. Don't let your heart be troubled. I went immediately to stories that are now public because both Sam and Blaine have talked about their miscarriages on the Ann Sons podcast. So Blaine and Emily have a lovely little three-year-old daughter. And then they announced with great joy, gosh, what, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. almost two years oh, ago. Yeah, two years now. They were pregnant again. And we were so excited. And and then uh, several months into that tragedy and, and a very um, 
awful loss of another little girl. And it was devastating and our family grieved and, you know, we had a ceremony to send her into the arms of Jesus and, and to do the ritual and the observances that you need to do over a human life. And, oh, for months, just heartbroken. And, and of course, praying, praying uh, for redemption, praying that they would get pregnant again, that their family would grow. And, and so when they told us that they were pregnant again, Ooh, really mixed reaction. Like externally joy. Yes, yeah, so so much joy. Yeah. And but internally as a dad. Yeah. And now as Poppy. Oh my gosh. Like my heart's like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I was already letting my heart go to fear. I was letting my heart go to worst case scenarios. I was in the vigilance that it required for me to go, nope, come back, heart, come back. You can't go there. I'm not, I'm not letting you go there. Jesus said, do not let fear in. Don't let speculation in. Don't spend days wondering, oh, no, what if, right? Mm -hmm. And you remember those days. And oh, yeah, and it's almost even like don't pray from a position of fear. Like... You know, you, you pray mm. differently when you're afraid of something. You do. I do. It's desperate mm -hmm. prayer. It's fearful. It's grasping. Anyway, as I, as I was wrestling with that, and this story has a good ending, we're really grateful to say we <laughs> got a new little grandson. But I have to be honest, it wasn't until he was in their arms. Oh, wow, honey. That my heart could like breathe. And it was just so braced. It was so braced. And I think I did an okay job about 50% of the time. I did an okay job of not letting my heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. I'm just aware of, wow, this really takes loving care. And it really takes confidence in Jesus yes. to follow his commands, to trust him with our lives and the things that matter. Yeah. Um, story recent for me is, I think, uh, most people know that our daughter-in-law, Susie, is a nurse. And um, she was working part-time, just one day a week at the hospital. And then when this pandemic hit, she, it was her hour, you know? She's a valiant heart. And she rose up and um, went back full-time. And wow, the fear that got in for me. I mean, mm. I was championing and cheering for her and grateful for her courage and her desire to sacrifice and serve. Mm. But her husband, my son, and their two little ones, they just expected to get it. Mm. That just comes with the territory. And so where my mind went was they're going to be that few percent where actually went to the children mm -hmm. and first mm -hmm. children weren't getting it, but then news came out that they were. Yeah. And, oh, I just went spinning. My head just went spinning. I, you know, tears over it yes. and needing to, like I said, my heart being a wild horse running off in different directions. Yes. Really what the reins were is where it continues on in John 14. When he said, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. It continues trust in God. Trust also in me. Mm. So I got to know him because I trust that he is good. Yes. I trust that he is for us. I yes. trust that he is capable, that he is yes. strong. Yeah. And so it mm. really was a huge thing for mm. me. And not just I did it once because my heart would run off again and I'd have to pull it back in. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That for some of us, this is a daily, that there are right. things in our lives where we are practicing a daily vigilance, mm -hmm. a daily protection, not to open the door of our heart to fill in the blank, right. discouragement, fear, you know, in the realm of what we call agreements. Yes. And we talk a lot about the power of breaking agreements. And if you come to our retreats or you get online with us and different things we've led on Zoom, you know, the, the power of breaking agreements can be enormously liberating for your mm -hmm. heart, you know, especially childhood agreements. I'll never be loved, I'll never be chosen, those kinds of things that were rooted in genuine heartache in mm -hmm. the past. And what a wonderful thing to break those agreements. But friends, like far better not to make them 
Yes. To be aware of the current agreements mm -hmm. that are being sought by the enemy with you, sought by your own fears, sought by the world. Sought by your life experiences. Yeah. So the reason we're bringing all this up is because as we've noticed our own journey through the um, pandemic and, and as we've noticed the, the continued uncertainty, like, yes, the world's beginning to open up a little. Maybe. Maybe. Right. And yes, there's various reports of, hey, it's going to be fine, or uh-oh, no, there's, you know, new cases springing up. I mean, it's just all uncertainty has been the banner yes. of this entire experience. Mm -hmm. You understand the enemy is rampaging, looking for those agreements in our hearts, looking for us to let things in, and in particular, fear. And so that's why we wanted to highlight the John 14 passage, do not let fear into your hearts. And Jesus is talking to his best friends who are about to watch his torture and execution, okay? So... Like he's to, he's not talking small things. Hey, don't worry about that presentation tomorrow. You know, hey, don't worry about your child's first day at school. And those are things that we do. Right, right. This is don't give in to fear over witnessing what is legitimately the worst thing you could possibly imagine. Yeah, right. When the data seems to say, go with fear, let it in, take the full ride. Jesus is saying, don't, don't. Trust in God, trust also in me. And in this, so when you live in an environment right now where literally billions of people are all making the same agreement. Right, like, right. There's a lot released on the earth. Oh my gosh. Right? Like, Standing against fear. It's in the atmosphere. It is. It's swirling mm -hmm. around us. And it's something that you and I are not by nature fearful people. Mm hmm. You know, we have other struggles, right. but it's, that hasn't been ours. But oh my goodness, we've both had to battle it through this pandemic because it's just swirling out there. You know, just the enemy is trying to, and here's the thing, gang, like he will actually throw an emotional experience over you. This is something you have to understand. Like just because you are feeling fear doesn't mean you have to agree with fear. Okay, there's just a pause there because that's that's really a huge thing. Right? You've all maybe made some bad decisions and saw a horror film or, you know, you were watching an adventure film and suddenly something was really scary and you felt fear, right? You had the emotion. Mm -hmm. Just because you had the emotion of fear doesn't mean you are a fearful person. Right. And it doesn't mean now I am afraid. Right. That was a moment in right. a movie that... Right. And so now you don't entertain it. There you go. You don't feed it. Run with it. Yeah. Encourage it. And mm -hmm. really just sort of, it's sort of like you just fling the doors of your yeah. heart open. Right. And to what it. you would say is you you don't want to agree with it. Yeah. By thinking, oh, I am a fearful person or yes. I have reason to be afraid. Yes. All yeah. those things. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't yeah. go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Really important in this hour to be aware of the things that are trying to get access to your heart. To your heart. This is why we have to rule over it. Yeah. To guard our heart with yes. all diligence. Yes. And gang, the good news is there's a ton of stuff that actually doesn't have to be your personal experience. Not just fear, but other things like discouragement, mm -hmm. despair. Ah. Here's a fascinating little tidbit from the Old Testament. So when God is giving these very, very detailed descriptions of the tabernacle and you know the fabric they're going to use and the pomegranates they're going to, you know, and the etchings and all this stuff that's going to go on, they then talk about the robes, the priest robes. Uh -huh. Do you know where I'm headed? I don't. So the priest robes were described, they were prescribed, they were dictated to sew an extra heavy seam around the robe of the priest, the neck of the collar. Because back in that day, rending your robes oh, yeah. was a public demonstration of despair, grief, sorrow, calamity, you know, and kings would rend their robes when bad news came. Parents would rend their right. robes with the loss of a prodigal, you know. But the priests who had been in the presence of God were never allowed to rend their robes. 
Oh, and that's so beautiful. Isn't that fascinating? Yes. And he's like, look, if you know me, you know that there is never an occasion to rend your robes, to give way to despair. And I want to add to this, this is really good for your heart because it actually strengthens you. Just as you grow in other areas of your life, as you, you know, learn to ride a bike, as you learn the difficulty of piano scales and you practice, as you, as you do these things that give you joy in your life because you practice them, this is going to strengthen you. Like you get better at governing your heart. Yeah. You get better at resisting currently sought agreements. Mm-hmm. You, get, you get better at saying, no, not going to go there, not going to go there, not going to go there. And the first couple rounds of this may be really difficult, but you do get stronger over time. And I think God's in that. I think he's in the strengthening process. Yes. That he wants our hearts to be strong. You do get better at it. And this is a kind of resilience that God really wants to shape in his people right now. Because troubled times on the earth and swirling stuff in the spiritual realm requires strong hearts. Yes. People who are able to govern the kingdom of their heart and not let this stuff in. Right. Whether it's hatred or envy or rage or discouragement or despair, speculation, and particularly in this moment, the fear thing. The fear is huge. Not letting yourself be tossed to and fro. Yes, exactly. But being grounded in who God is. Yes. That he is trustworthy, that yes. he is faithful. Yes. That he is fighting for you. All of that. Yeah. Like that he's he's worthy yes. of your trust. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing is no. Just as you're feeling something trying to gain access, yeah. it's just, there's just a choice. You, it is, I know I'm feeling discouragement. I know I'm feeling the pull to speculation. Uh-huh. I know I'm feeling envy or I'm feeling fear. But again, remember, gang, that can come over you when you're watching a television show. And it's just because it's a good story and suddenly you're feeling what, you know, what they want you to feel. It doesn't mean you're that person, right? That's so good. And so the first thing is no, you can't have my heart. Mm. I will not let this in. No, 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 no. And then what? What has helped you in this? It's really remembering who God is in that moment to, well, two things, to entrust the things that I am concerned about to him, mm-hmm. to invite him in, you know, though I give everything and everyone to you, God, yes, for you to carry my concerns, yes, but to rest on his goodness, turn yes. my attention to fix my mind on things that are, yes. are true. And, and then that passage, whatever is true and good and noble and lovely, all of that, like, no, I really, I really need to turn my attention to the heart that he's placed in me that's mm-hmm. good, this new heart, and, mm-hmm. and who he really is. Yeah, it's that old thing of when you're crossing a rickety bridge, don't look down. <laughs> and then suddenly I'm remembering the scene from Shrek. I'm looking down, Shrek! I'm looking down! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because if you look at the thing that is inciting fear, you're going to have a very difficult time guarding your heart. If you fix your eyes on your father. Yes. You fix your eyes on Jesus. It's that beautiful scene in The Hobbit where the dragon is about to destroy Lake Town and the hero archer is <gasps> yes. there and, and his son is looking at the dragon and he says, look at me, son. Don't look at him. Look at me. He looks at the dragon. He's afraid, right? Sure. He looks at his dad. He's okay. He's confident. So scripture, you start saying scripture out loud to yourself. Mm-hmm. You go, no, no, God has not given me a spirit of fear or whatever is the scripture that's applicable to your situation. God has given me a future and a hope. Mm -hmm. I will never leave you. I will never betray you. God does not abandon. God does not betray. Be anxious for nothing. One of the things I personally found helpful during the pandemic and the the hardcore quarantine period that we all, you know, went through weeks and weeks and months and months of was, I would say the Apostles' Creed to myself. Oh, that's so good. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Mm. Like just reminding myself, no, this is what I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Like it's just so good to name. No, no, here is what I believe. Mm. These are the things I believe. So 
we just thought a series, uh, probably three episodes here, gang, just to give you some direction, encouragement, some tools, some reminders that your heart is one of the most precious parts of your entire kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it deserves, needs, cries out for vigilant, diligent protection. You govern your heart. And that might be a brand new idea for some folks. Like you don't just experience life, you actually govern your heart. And we're going to all need to do that and grow in our ability to do that in these days. More to come next week, but we focused on fear this time. Can I just add one more for you all to be aware of, and then we'll pick it up next week? Hatred, acrimony, strife, division. anger, yeah. division. Um, yeah, that stuff is also swirling right now, and you don't want to give place to that either. So, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, teach us how to govern our hearts. Teach me personally. Lord, show me where I am not governing my heart right now. Show me where I am letting stuff in. And then help me by the power of God in me. Help me, Spirit of God, govern my heart with a, with a diligence and a vigilance and a resolve. In your name we all pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 